CC Rock on Metal Mat, and I am on 3Com Field here in Candlestick Park, where in just a little while, San Francisco 49ers are going to play my team, the Rams, Super Bowl champs. That's right. And you thought Dio thought this meant heavy metal. No, it's the Rams, baby. That's right. We're in just a little while, they're going to be the Rams and the 49ers in the field. But I know CC Rock is not a sports show. In a way, we have got a great interview with Don Dockin. Just like a year ago, we did a Ram show. We did an interview with Dockin. We've got Don Dockin again doing some great stuff from the Sacramento Valley Amphitheater and some great stuff from his new video, Live from the Sun. So this should be very interesting, along with a great game. Kurt Warner's pinky finger is broken, but Trent Green's going to come on through. So sit back and enjoy this sports edition of CC Rock, baby. Take you into the Welcome back to CC Rock. I'm still Metal Matt, and we are still at the Sacramento Valley Amphitheater out here in Marysville. Marysville, California. My God, I never thought they'd build a place out here, but they did. It's a beautiful place. And we just saw Dawkin on stage. I've got Don next to me. How you doing, Don? Doing good. A little sweaty. 
Yeah, well, you just came off stage after a hot set. Sounded good. I mean, we, we got to quit meeting like this. This is the third time. I mean, you guys are front runners now on CC Rock. What's up? Yeah, that's the first time I've, ever, I've literally walked off a sta <coughs> stage into an interview. I mean, you must like CC Rock, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a ticket. Yeah, no, I, I, I like you guys because you're you're always been cool to us. So, yeah, well, I'll tell you, you guys have as it shows at the Edge. I mean, long live the Edge. Well, unfortunately, it's no longer living. They turned into a blue supper club. You can believe that stuff. But I don't know where we're gonna get you anymore. So I decided I had to come out to Sacramento and say hi to you. I don't know why I call it Sacramento. It's Marysville. You know. Well, actually, yeah, after this uh, Poison Run, we're going to Europe for about a month and a half, and then we're going right back through the states again, West Coast, doing a headline sh uh, tour for the fans that want to see the whole show. So I don't know, we'll be playing up here. I don't know where now in this area, but we'll play someplace. Well, you know, this tour itself, I mean, last year it was the the Rat, the uh, Great White and Poison. This year we got you and Cinderella on the tour. I mean, how do you like it being on tour with Poison? Is it pretty cool? Yeah, good guys. I mean, I've known the guys in Poison since we were little kids, you know, and uh, from L.A. when they first came out from the East Coast and they are first starting out. I didn't know the guys in Cinderella, you know, until this tour. I just met them, but uh, and I always liked their music. But man, I really Cinderella. I'm really like those guys a lot. They're really nice, but they're really, really good live. Oh, yeah. They have a lot in common with us, Doc. I think they have a lot of harmonies and uh, and Tom Kiefer. Man, he just sings his hiney off. You know, he's really good. They're very, very impressive band to see live. So. Somewhere to turn around, let nobody inside. Every now and then we all need to let go. For some it's a doctor, for me it's rock and roll. For some it's a bottle, for some it's a pill. Some people wear the Bible clothes, it's giving them a thrill. Others point the finger if they don't like what they see. You live in a glass house, be thrown. A little shelter, just a little helper to get us by. We all need a little shelter, just a little helper. Ooh, and it'll be all right. To get us by, we all need a little shelter.
on this tour, you actually, a little while ago, did a live video and live CD, uh, Live at the Sun, correct? Tell me about this, and tell me about especially the instance at the first song. I heard something really kind of interesting happened. Something that it you know doesn't happen too often in a live video, but it was something that you had a, you had a problem the first song, and you did a retake. Yeah, it, uh, nothing worked. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like my show sometimes. <laughs> but so we did. We we did the whole entire show. It was really a full on live show. At the end of the show, they said. Uh, you know, guess what? We didn't. The audio was missed. Half the audio was missing on the first song. Two of the cameras were down. Can you do it over? And I said, We're done. We're spent. You know. So we went off stage, dried off, and told the audience, you know, we're gonna refilm the first song. Uh, if you want to hang around, you can. If you want to split, that's too. Yeah, that's cool too. And we threw in another song just for the hell of it that we did, did, didn't do in the show. And we did it again. You know, you know, it's technical problems. You know, because that the live album we've done is a live album. Like some people say, they go in the studio and they fix it up and all that. We couldn't do that because they filmed it. So if we would have overdubbed anything, you would have seen that it wasn't real. So it was like, what it is is what it is. But it, we just finished it about two days ago, and uh, I just I directed the video and edited it. So you directed and edited it. How cool. So you actually had your hands right into the actual filming. Not the filming, but the actual post-production. Yeah, I did. Uh, I, produced, I produced this one myself, and uh, the band said, go ahead and you know, produce it and direct it yourself. So I had, I had a clear vision on how I wanted to look. I wanted it to look like, not like MTV or in concert, you know, I wanted it to look like uh, the old Woodstock movie. With all look. You know, with lots of different pictures, you know, like going like that. You see the drummer here and the guitar player all at the same time. So I, I had a specific look I was going for. So I, that's why we ran 10 cameras. We had 10 cameras going at all times. 10 cameras. And now the theater, the, the Sun Theater, how is this place? I heard it's hot. Oh, it's a pretty hot venue. We had 10 cameras. Two of the cameras were on cranes. Uh, 40 foot cranes, the cameras were swooping across the audience. Two steady cams, chasing Jeff around. It was pretty, we got some killer footage. Footage we shot tonight, obviously it's you know, at the headline facility for tonight, you're actually the, the third band on. And, but I still am blown away by it, I gotta tell you. I mean, you say Cinderella is really hot. For me, maybe I'm just more of a Dawkins fan, I mean, I just can't understand the billing. <laughs> <laughs> Between me and you, I mean, I don't understand it. I thought you guys have done more. Yeah. How, how did this? How, how did it, how did the billion get selected? As far as one, two, three, four. Uh, it's poisons the headliner, and you picked it. Yeah, well, there's there, there's some discussion about who would play first and last and third and second, and it basically came down to money. You know, who you know. I mean, you guys don't mind, I mean, being a three, I mean, we obviously got the crowd coming in, they're a little more alive, maybe not quite so in a stupor. Well, we figured, you know, it would cost us several hundred thousand dollars more to be up higher in the bill, lights, production, semi-truck, and we figured the fans, from what our knowledge of the hardcore Dawkins fans is, they know whenever we're going on, they're going to get there early, and we're, you know, you know Dawkins, we're meeting Mateus Band, you know, we figure lights, no lights, big drum riser, small drum riser, it all comes down to our music. We don't need bombs and lights and all that stuff. So we said, you know, we don't need to spend an extra hundred thousand dollars to get our message across. So we'll just, we'll go on uh, third, you know, in a second, you know, after slaughter, that's fine. We don't have a problem with that. So far, most of the shows we've been doing it fine, you know. So, I mean, it's been a really interesting tour, a lot of hap happenings as far as a giant mirror ball falling a few, few, few weeks ago. <laughs> Every Monday? Yeah, I broke my leg. You broke your leg? Holy moly. I don't see a cast. You just got it off, and uh, about three weeks ago, yeah, in Florida. How did that happen? Uh, we took a day off and went down jet ski and the whole band and crew to the bus down to a private lake, and I ate in a jet ski bad, about 50 miles an hour. Broke my fibula on the top and bottom, fractured my ankle in two places. So the first couple of shows I had to do in a wheelchair, and that wasn't working out very good. Then I kind of worked my, from wheelchair up to a uh, stool, then I kept going to the hospital and. Draining the kneecap, kneecaps. It's still, if you saw my leg, it's pretty. It sounds ugly. like the Skid Row story from Kiss. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So I've been draining my kneecap, putting needles in it, but uh, and I'm on all kinds of pain medication. I can't see it in you. <laughs> Must be the energy. Hey, it, it feels good every day now, except for uh, they weren't clean breaks; they're just all hairline fractures. But after the show, usually afterwards, it starts swelling up. But it's been better. It's been three weeks, so it's they said four to five. So. So I hear you're going to do some solo projects. Everybody's got the little project going on. As far as you know, you're going to do a solo album. I heard is that possible? I mean, I, I actually I like to see you guys see you guys come out doing their album personally. But solos be cool. I was going to work on a solo album, and I've decided to hold it up again now because I've had to direct the Dawkins video, produce it. I'm already writing another album for Dawkins. Got a European tour coming up. 
and Duncan is my priority, you know. So I have, you know, I, I don't, I can't speak for Jeff and Reb and what they're doing, but Duncan is Duncan, and it's my namesake, and I have to concentrate on Duncan. So I, there's a, a lot of people want me to do my solo album, but uh, it's like more of an acoustic bluesy thing. But uh, I'm so busy with Duncan, between writing another record, producing, directing. I, I have to concentrate on the next album, so I'm um, putting the solo album on hold. Race to Slate was so strong. I mean, I can't see it. It's going to be hard to do a follow-up to such a strong album, but like I said, I'd see putting all your energies. Like for me tonight, we're trying to do three bands. It's tough. It's tough to spread yourself around and take care of one thing. So Better to, better to do one thing 100% than three things 70%. So I had to... I was right in the middle of doing my solo record. I said, you know what? I can't do it. You know, I just can't finish it. So I've had to put it on the hold again to do a docking record because uh, I've got to write the songs. And, and this, this video turned out to be, this movie, it's like a two-hour movie, turned out to be a huge undertaking. How that about that? Image, <laughs> oh, man. It's just, a, you know, out, and plus 10, 10 cameras, 10 hours of footage. We got two. <laughs> so I think about 10 hours of footage to go over. Pouring over it going, oh, boy. It's a lot of work.